This is your fellow passenger speaking and in this video we are going to take a look at a problem with the tempo in Ableton. Basically, if you want to automate tempo changes, you would generally do that using automation on the timeline like this. But I like to use Max for Live devices to automate things. I thought it was as simple as taking an LFO or um, uh, an expression control and just map it to the BPM and then get good results. But for some reason that doesn't work. Let me show you. So we got this beat running at 110 BPM. Here we got an empty MIDI track. And if I take the expression control and map this, the, the random lane to the tempo in Ableton. Uh, as you can see, if I just set that to the changes are, um, there's 100% possibility to be any value between zero and 100. When I press a key, you can see the tempo actually changing up here, but it is not actually changing. So if I play this track, Even if I was pressing that button and you can see the value up here changing, it's actually not changing the speed of the track. It's not until you decouple the mapping and all of a sudden that that will uh, work. So now that has become black and you can see the tempo 852, uh, 852.54 BPM is now working. Nice. But that's not good enough because we want to be able to automate this while the track is playing. So I have built a very basic device that can do this in Max for Live. When you open it, it will automatically pick up the tempo, whatever the tempo was at the point of opening this device. So it will be 1852.54 BPM. So when I'm turning this, you can see the tempo is still black. It's not grayed out at the top there. So if I turn that down, and as I'm turning that dial, you can now hear that the tempo is changing. Great, that was step one. Now you can take an expression control and randomize this. But the second problem is that using percentages to dial in a tempo range can be quite tricky, especially as I would probably be interested in values somewhere between these default values that I've set here, 80 and 180, I don't think I would usually want a track to be over, you know, 600 BPM or whatever. So I've built this nifty little function into here, um, which allows you to randomize this within the device itself. So if I click that, you will get a value between the min and the max here. You can change those values if I turn that up. If I do want to have really fast tempos or really slow tempos, you can make that, you can set that up as you like. And this is nicely paired with another friendly passenger device, the TFP trigger. What this device is doing is taking a concept from the modular synth world 
where you use gates or triggers to trigger events or virtually pressing a button on a module where you don't have to press it by hand you just send it a pulse and that toggles something or presses something and this is basically doing the same thing it is just reading looking for midi notes it doesn't matter which midi note is coming in on this particular in this case on this particular channel and then you can map that to buttons to press them so if i map that to the random uh, i can now press a key and you get random values so now you can pair this with something like uh, we can take the step sequencer for example we just have to put that before uh, because they read from left to right so this one will send out midi notes so i expect this to sound a bit crazy now but let's try it i should probably not have had this value as high as uh, Maybe not the best use case, but you do not have to have the tempo change every 16th note. You can either trigger it by pressing a key on your keyboard or you can actually just put a MIDI note out on the whatever you want to do. If you like these little videos that I make and you feel you can support what I do, please check out my Patreon. And as a thank you, you will be able to grab these two devices and you can use them to your heart's content. I am sure you can come up with something really creative where you... I don't know. What will you do? Please tell me. Give it a go and come up with some creative uses for, for this. I have a big plan which I'm not quite ready to reveal just yet where this is going to be an integral part to that and I am going to use it to great benefit rather than just creating chaos but while we're talking about tempo I understand why tempo changes are not that common in electronic music I think that is because of DJing it would be quite tricky for DJs if the tempos would be changing while they're doing beat mixing. I, I get it, I get it. But I also don't think that we are making music necessarily for a DJ. Sometimes we're making music just to be listened to in whatever context. And I think tempo changes is something that's historically been used in other genres of music not the least classical music to create tension and release and i would like to see this explored in electronic music a lot more there are some great examples out there but as mentioned it is not that common so please surprise me with what you can do and i hope that my bigger plan will work out where this is a small part of that bigger plan when that happens i'm going to share it with you thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again hopefully next week thank you very much goodbye